Hi everyone, I'm going to make a video that uh, helps us use Bridgebase online, but before you get started, I just want to say that I keep saying goodbye at the end of the video, and then I discovered that there was something else I wanted to say. So watch the video right through to the end, even though I say goodbye, then I put another clip in after that. I've sliced a number of clips together uh, to form this single video. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, hi and welcome again everyone. I'm going to do a video to explain how to get into bridgebase.com and how to use it. So let's uh, let's do that. So you go to www.bridgebase.com, which you can get to just by typing that in, either on your Windows PC or on your tablet or on your phone, whatever you like. If you haven't registered, click here and you get a registration option. I don't quite know why that doesn't sort of show the whole thing, but it says login register. I've already uh, registered and I have a username of A Kemeny. So I'm just going to log in with my username and password, scroll down, and I've, I've remembered the password on this browser so I don't have to put it in again. So when we get in here, usually what you want to do is to have a game with friends, organize the game first, and um, click on that you want to just play a casual game. So casual, and then usually I start a new table, and here we get to choose what uh, scoring we would like, whether we'd like match points, which is a normal percentage style scoring that we have in duplicate, or whether we want to pay, play Tim's Bridge for imps, uh, total points, and you can also set up teaching tables and bidding practice tables, which is useful if you and your partner just want to have deals and practice your bidding. You can, you can give your table a name if you want. This is quite good to say permission required to play. If you don't do that, then you will find that people just come and sit down at the table as soon as there's a spare seat. By putting permission required to play, it will pop a pop up to the host of the table asking them if they want to play. So let's assume that I've uh, set up to have a game now or in a few minutes' times with my various friends. I've reserved that seat for myself. Again, I don't quite know why you can't see that, but it's reserved for me now. I can reserve this seat for someone else. I happen to know there's another play called that. And this seat I'm going to reserve for this player and start competitive game is usually what I do. Now it's telling me that uh, invitations have been issued but the person's not logged in. So um, there he is, he's there now, there's another person who's there but this person's not logged in. So I could uh, Clear. I'm going to clear this seat because I actually don't want this guy to sit down. He, I know this person's not logged in. He's my son. He's not logged in. This guy happens to be logged in, so I'm actually going to clear that. So he's lost his invitation to play there. He could choose to still come and play there if he wanted to. Um, alternatively, I could click here and choose that I would like to have a robot in that seat. However, if you decide you want a robot, it's going to cost you some bridge-based dollars. So you might not want to do that. You don't have to pay. You'll find people will come and sit down with you. Just looking at the table, we can see that I'm the host because there's a little crown symbol next to my name. So if my four friends, if I'd reserved all the four seats and my four friends were here, as soon as they all sat down, we'd get cards and we'd be into it. Ball one north would be the dealer. Now, if I sit here for a bit longer, no doubt I will get other people coming and joining the game. But let me just go and join another game and just play around in there and we'll see what's going on. So I'm just going to confirm that I leave the table. By the way, if the host leaves the table, the next person who has been sitting there the longest becomes the host. So if he sat there next and then him next and then him next, then the north who sat second would become the host and the little crown would move up there. Anyway, let's go back. I'm going to leave this table for now. So that's how to set up a new table. Now, take me to the first seat available. Let's suppose I just want to play with any old random people, which I don't particularly recommend, but let's do it anyway. Now, the host on this particular table seems to be my partner, who's George, 1955. Oh, no, he just left. And this person became the host because the crown went over there. You can see we're playing for imps. And at the moment, north, south, or way behind. I think there is a way of requesting uh, requesting uh, that uh, you could uh, uh, that you could get the score reset. In fact, I might do that. Here's a, here's how I can chat. I can chat to anyone I like, a private person if I know their email address, the kibitzes, the opponents, or the whole table. So I might just say, "Hi."
My partner's opened three diamonds. I have a very good hand. I think I'm worth maybe. I'm not going to worry too much about the bridge, but I'm just going to bid three spades. So I've asked for the score to be reset, and you can see that he's done that. And so I'm just going to check back. I'm checking to the table notice. You can't check to your partner, but you could check to the kibitzes if there are any kibitzes at this table. And I'll show you how to look at that in a moment. Actually, I hope I don't end up the Clara here. So what I can do now is, let's just wait for him to make a bid. Okay, it looks like I'm playing three spades. We can see who's logged on. These are my friends. So you can right click on a person and you can make them your friend. And he's bid four hearts. Okay, that's, uh, well, I don't think he's going to make that. Let's double that. My partner's got diamonds, I've got a heart trick and some spades and the king of clubs. No guarantee, of course, but anyway. As I was saying, I could right click on this person and follow him. He would now become a friend of mine. And I would be able now to go over here. I think I'll lead uh, top spade. Come over here and find that he's a, now a friend of mine. And I could unfollow him if I wanted to as well. So that's how you follow friends. Uh, that's a pretty good dummy. Oh, I guess I better. Oh, in fact, it's a. What happened there? He's got. Uh, he's, oh, he hasn't got any diamonds. Right, right. Interesting. All right. Well, I guess I'll try another. Try another spade. Okay. So spades. Were, partner had three spades. Doesn't look like we're going to be beating this. Yeah, so they're making this, I guess. I guess at this point I have to try to hope my partner's got some tricks and clubs, otherwise we're not bidding it. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. I'm not worried about the actual game. Oh, my partner's got some clubs. Wonderful. Oh, we did beat it. Ha! Huh. Didn't really expect my partner to have ace when of clubs when he'd opened three diamonds, but sometimes you get lucky. Notice there that we're playing, playing imps, so I have to just try to beat the contract, so I have to hope my partner's got some clubs. All right, as I mentioned over here, up here are my friends. And in a minute, I'm going to wait till we get to the end of the hand. Oh, he took another trick, did he? Oh, that's nice. Uh, I've got no idea what's going on. I haven't been concentrating. Let's just wait for the end of the hand because I want to show you the sort of stuff you can see at the end. Notice also that now we've got a robot sitting there and this person has become the host, IST Dream. So that's a problem with playing with... Uh, I don't see a lot of point in covering that. Uh, that's a problem with playing with uh, uh, random people. They will tend to jump out of the chair and all of a sudden you've lost your opponent. So that's a bit unfortunate, but never mind. That's why I prefer to play with um, friends prearranged if possible. Okay, so there we beat that two tricks. So we've got 300. So now we can go over here to history and have a look at the whole board. We can see what happened at other tables there. We won 1.2 imps for doing that. We go to other tables. You can see what happened at the other tables. So, you know, these were the various different contracts at different tables. All right. So notice here also I'm sitting east. So it always puts me at the bottom. All right. My partner is the dealer. I don't have a partner at the moment. That's okay. That's okay. Someone might sit down. We'll just have to wait for two more people to sit down. But I want to show you uh, what else we can see over here. Uh, so, yeah, you can see recent hands, recent, you know, all this sort of stuff. Yep, other deals I've played in the past, recent tournaments I've played over there. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I played some instant tournaments. That was a while ago. The instant tournaments are, uh, are suspended at the moment, something to do with the COVID. Now, I just heard a noise. It tells me that it's my turn to do something. So you can see we've had two other players sit down. So this is a pretty good hand. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about the bridge. But if I was to make an artificial bid, what I could do is here, what I could do here is type. Uh, let me just make my bid, and I'll do it in a minute. So if you want to alert, by the way, here you alert your own bids. You do not alert your partner's bid, and you alert not by chatting to the table because if you chat to the table, everybody can see it. But rather. Um, 
you click on explain. So I could click on this bid now and give a late alert, right? I could say late alert, it means XXX, whatever. That's not the best. So I can always click on my own bid and see uh, see what, uh, what it means. Okay. Well, I don't like hearts much. I suppose I'll just go back to three diamonds. So what I'm going to do here is... It's not really an alert, right? But let's say it's an alert. Well, let's say my short hearts is my alert, which is obvious. This is not really an alert because this is just a natural bid. But if I do that, now my opponents will see that message, but my partner won't. Okay. He doubles. Well, I've got nowhere to go. I can just click on that to uh, click on that to or click or click. How do I get rid of it? Yeah, click on click on it to uh, just on the three diamond bid to get rid of it. Now during the play, we can always see. Am I playing three diamonds doubled? Am I okay? During the play, we can always see what the auction was by clicking here and just click on it again or click there again to take it away. Anyway, I better play a card. Looks like I want a rough spade in dummy. So I should be able to make this easily. An, uh, oh no, not rough a spade in dummy. There's, there are three in each hand. SP, no. Oh, okay, spades. Just telling me the one spade meant spades. Yeah, well, that wasn't necessary. But anyway, he was obviously mucking around and uh, doing the similar thing. So what am I going to do here? I've got to lose a spade and a heart, and I've already lost one trick. You can see that we have one trick. That's here, and they have one trick. So now you'll see it go to two and one. Hmm. Diamonds are four nil. Um, okay. Better go for a uh, club rough, I think. Just watch his hand play out. What else can we show you? So at the moment I've taken four, they've taken two. Oh, I can click the claim button at any point. I'll probably do that at the end. So let's just see what happens here. So he's taking some time. That's the other problem with playing against other people. Sometimes they take an inordinately long time to play. So I, the guy sitting south on my left has a natural diamond trick, so I don't care even if he over roughs and spade or something. It'll just be with a normal diamond trick. Um, yeah, totally, totally, totally fine either way. What happens if he roughs? No, yeah, I might as well throw that away. I suppose it doesn't matter if he roughs. I don't think he will anyway. Now I'm going to put claim I'm just going to claim, claim four more tricks and I'm going to put an explain lose to DJ only and click claim. At this point, they'll see my cards and they'll have the option to accept or reject the claim. So they're thinking about it and if they decide to reject it, I'll play on. And they accepted it. So, claim of nine tricks accepted. So, obviously, uh, that would be a very good score for us if we go back over here. You'll also notice the vulnerability is shown by the red here. The D is for dealer. Two clubs. And now I'm going to click on it and, right, uh, click on it. And now, he, ah, yes, he's, so when I click on the bid, he is asked about what it means. Right, and he's written 23 plus. So, I mean, at the table, I wouldn't have asked because I don't really care. He's presumably got a strong hand. But just for the purposes of showing you, by clicking on the bid, and again, I'll click on this bid, right, and see if he gives an answer. So I, I made sure I did click on it. I don't want to click again. If I click again, 
Okay, I'm just going to pass here. If I wanted to bid something, again, I could write it in some explanation here and then bid three no trumps or something, right? But I'm obviously not going to do that. So I'm just going to get rid of that and pass. Better to explain your bid before making it. Right, so now he's explained it. But it was a bit late, right? Because people could have made their next bid. So what else can we do here? Table options. Right, so if you were the host, you could probably muck around with those things. I'm not the host. The host is over there. Again, I can dismiss this by clicking up here on the two diamond bid. Anyway, they're going to have some sort of auction and get to some sort of contract. Okay, he's got hearts. He doesn't like clubs, I guess. It's all natural. I suppose I'll leave the ten of spades. Okay. So, wow, that is a ghastly, ghastly hand for three no trumps. He's pretty much going to need four clubs to the king, uh, ace king to make this because uh, otherwise he's not going to ever get to dummy. Good, my partner has a club. So he's hoping, I think, for clubs 2-2. Two, two. He's going to be disappointed. So now he's in the trouble. I didn't even watch what card my partner played on the uh, on the first round because I was talking, but I'm just going to continue spades and just let declare a play out of his hand. I like the idea of getting a trip with my jack. Oh, that's not so good. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't concentrating, talking a bit too much. Looks like he's not getting to dummy. What else can I show you? So that's about it, really. I think we've done everything we needed to do. Oh. Okay, so we managed to beat that too. We got six, they got seven. Yeah, terrible dummy. I probably would have run away to uh, five clubs or something, or four clubs or something with that hand. That is not a good dummy for three no trumps. Uh, yeah, so um, there you go. That's, that's pretty much, I think, all there is to it. I'm going to say now... Thank you for game. Have to go. I also could. Well, let me just pass. Well, I'm, I could also um, chat to um, the kibitzes. I could also do a private chat. Right now, I don't quite know what. When I do a private chat, it should actually pop the name of the person up there who I want to chat to. I noticed this last night. Sometimes it doesn't pop the name of the person there. I'm not sure why. I was trying to chat to one kibitzer. But if you want to chat to the kibitzers, you can just say. And any people will see that are going to be the kibitzers at the table. And as you can see, it's telling me where my chat's going to. And it always chats back to the last person. So if I now want to chat back to the table, I can say, last one for me. If I wanted to, but I'll just... Uh, I'm not going to bore you with watching the rest of this. I think we've done enough to uh, show you how to use bridgebase.com. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. I just wanted to show you one other small thing that I forgot to mention. When you, if you click on here, I mentioned if you click here, you see the auction. If you click here, you get to see the last trick that was played. Provided you haven't played your card yet. So just like in the club where you can ask for a review of the last trick if you haven't turned your card over, you can, you can see what the last card was by doing that. Of course, you can't see earlier tricks. So I think that's about all I wanted to uh, show you that I hadn't mentioned in the video so far. Okay, bye. One other thing I wanted to show you as well that I haven't shown you yet, I'll remember in a minute, is when you want to get out of the table, you just click up here on the arrow. 
want to leave this table? Yes. So I don't feel too bad about leaving because I only made one bid there, so that's fine. Okay, bye.